Good afternoon YouTube. Um, we're gonna be doing a little DIY project uh, today. I've done a few more of these uh, DIY projects in, in uh, Dutch but I thought it interesting to uh, do a few in English as well. Now uh, the project for today uh, or what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be making some cheese. Uh, we're gonna be showing how to do or how to make some uh, cheese with some very basic uh, implements some improvised materials and uh, basically we're, what we're going to be making today or the recipe for today is going to be um, a fresh cheese uh, that's not pressed so a fresh semi soft cheese um, so first of all what are we going to need our basic ingredient or main ingredient is going to be of course milk we have here 10 liters of milk I think that's about two gallons in imperials uh, but 10 liters of milk now if you're wondering what kind of milk do I need, well this is farm fresh milk. You want either uh, raw or uh, pasteurized milk to make cheese. Um, basically the milk you find at the supermarket for 95% of the milk you find is going to be UHT or ultra high temperature treated. Uh, problem is uh, for anything but soft cheese it just won't do. Um, this uh, ultra high temperature process destroys the uh, <coughs> destroys the voila, um, destroys the structure of the milk so that it won't clot when we're making cheese but we'll do more on that later on so but first of all I have the luck that I have a dairy farmer not too far away so a little uh, few minutes ago I went looking for uh, 10 liters of fresh milk I'm using raw milk um, again, you could use also pasteurized, um, but first of all we're going to pour the milk into our pots and then we're going to start warming. Now we're about ready to start our cheese making process. So um, first of all we have milk that we've heated up to around about 30 degrees centigrade. Um, sorry I don't do Fahrenheit, um, but that we've or uh, heat it up, sorry, up to well 30 degrees is just a little over uh, cold, so slightly lukewarm. Uh, this is the ideal temperature for uh, basically an acidic uh, or for basically adding acid into our uh, milk. So the idea is to uh, make the milk turn, uh, to basically separate indeed the, uh, the liquid from the solids from the fat and we're going to be using two things one is some lactic acid cultures from some fresh buttermilk I already see some turning of the milk so this is basically well sour milk that's going to help uh, basically the cheese curds separating from the um, separating from the whey and we're also going to be adding some lemon juice just to get some extra acid that should be about right now basic rule of thumb here is to add about um, two tablespoons of acid per liter uh, since we've already added quite a dose of buttermilk I'm not going to exaggerate now also for this recipe uh, we're basically going to there we go I think we can lower down the heat right now. So we're gonna let the milk turn for a few minutes. But basically for this recipe, we're also going to directly um, add our salt. We are going to directly salt our milk before turning it into cheese. And what we're making is basically what's um, a Brazilian style of fresh cheese called queijo de Minas or well basically uh, the style of cheese of Minas Gerais and it's called for in the recipe about a good tablespoon of salt per two liters so we should be adding about two and a half tablespoons per stock pot honestly speaking I think the farmer from which I buy the cheese basically we can add a little more I do have a habit 
of it, but he's been pretty generous. I think I got more to 11 liters than actually 10. So now we can basically oh, leave this covered. We had a little accident, nothing serious. Um, but basically you can already see some of the curds forming. Uh, we'll clean that up. But uh, you can uh, already see the cheese turning. Um, so I got closer to 11 liters, which makes for pretty full stock pot, but no, no problem. We'll clean that up and uh, we'll come back for the next phase adding the rennet. Now, we're about five minutes into our uh, cheese project. So uh, as you can see, uh, we already have some separation. The acid is working. Um, we're at good temperature. So now it's time to add some rennet. Uh, rennet is basically a bacterial culture that comes from the stomach of the cow itself um, and is used indeed to bake the cheese so the cheese is already turning but this is going to make the cheese coagulate make that make uh, sure that the cheese particles start to stick together um, now dosage wise this is really something that you dose by the drop um, we're gonna make a semi soft or semi hard cheese if you like uh, depending upon how much you dosage uh, or how much you uh, put in the cheese will basically become uh, more consistent or softer um, so you can put up to three to four drops for a um, hard cheese and uh, about one drop for a soft cheese per liter so we're gonna do about two drops two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And that should um, pretty much give us a medium hard cheese. Uh, so now all we have to do is wait. So uh, the process is going to, um, so the cheese is still turning, the acid is still working, and uh, the rennet is going to make the cheese coagulate. Now, we're about uh, half an hour to three, 45 minutes later into our cheese project so as you can now see our cheese is coagulated uh, as proof if we take our spoon you can see that what's floating on top it's actually solid mass it's no longer a um, it's no longer a liquid and what we have to do now is actually to uh, cut the cheese curds to uh, actually make them settle down in the bottom so that we can separate the whey from the cheese uh, what I'm using in this case, I'm a fan of, uh, let's just say, home, um, home found solutions. This is, I think it's, I don't remember if it's a, yeah, I think it's a tomato cutter that I actually bought for this. You can indeed buy uh, off the counter solutions from cheese making shops, but I found that this works just as well. So all we're doing now is basically cutting the cheese curds into pieces, separating them and then basically they're gonna sink to the bottom in about 10 to 15 minutes we should be able to separate them from uh, from our weight using a cheesecloth. We're again a few minutes further as you can see the uh, cheese has actually uh, settled to the bottom it's now time to separate the cheese from the weight um, what we're going to be using is actually a colander lined with a um, with a cheesecloth. Again, an improvised solution, being that what I'm using actually they're really very cheapo dishcloths. Uh, so if you don't have access to real cheesecloth, this is a very good solution. They notoriously suck for doing the dishes, um, but they're fine enough that they make an excellent uh, cheesecloth. And basically what we're going to do is pour gently. I've already used a few or uh, moved a few ladles of uh, liquid into the colander. And as you see, the cheese is starting to come on top. And basically the water is drained out or the whey is actually drained out. And uh, the cheese is what's going to remain into our, uh, our cheesecloth. Um, so that's basically how we're going to separate it. We can uh, use a little bit of pressure to remove the cheese and then basically we can go into, uh, into the cheese mold. Um, after about well, 15 minutes of work and about one and a half hours of patience here we have the final result. 
So we have two uh, molds full of cheese. Uh, again, the molds are very improvised uh, materials. They are basically some uh, storage containers or uh, food storage containers that I uh, poked some holes in so that they can drain. So the cheese will now be allowed to uh, drain for a couple of hours and in about five to six hours we should have ready-made cheese. Um, well, it is ready now, but uh, the cheese should be drained and it should be ready to eat. Um, again, I prefer a few engineered solution, home engineered solutions, very simple but very cheap. This whole project, I think for probably um, five to six euros, you could start making your own cheese. Uh, so worthwhile, not, not a lot of effort and uh, easy to try at home. Maybe just one more short side note. Um, as you saw, this is about what's left uh, as to cheese. Some of the liquid still uh, dripping out, but most of the liquid has gone lost. Uh, that's of course the whey. Now you don't you don't have to discard uh, the whey. Um, well, if you hear the name for anybody who does some fitness whey whey protein, it's actually made from this stuff. So basically, you can use it as a whey supplement. It won't taste like uh, chocolate or uh, strawberries, but still, it's usable. For me, it's going to be just a uh, good little drink for my chickens, but it's uh, not something that you have to throw away. You can use it in pastries, you can use it as a whey supplement, you can use it in various ways around the kitchen um, as, a, as a replacement for whole milk. Um, so just a, just a quick note that indeed all the liquid doesn't have to be thrown out.